Witchcraft 15, Blood Rose. So let's talk about Rose. These movies set Will on the sidelines and promote her as the lead, and I suppose in theory they could come up with an interesting story to center around her, but as she is, she's sort of, um, unsympathetic, easily tricked, and kinda seems like there's not a thought in her head. And she kinda looks like Bambi with her big alert eyes, sorta like the anti-sleepy. If you want to go with the angle that she can't control her powers and the murders or accidents, she has to seem a little remorseful about it and maybe not try to encourage those powers until she's got a handle on it. She just seems to accept the murder thing pretty quickly, and that doesn't really endear me to her. Maybe if they'd had Will passing the torch to her or something, it would work a little better, but as is, she's not that interesting. Maybe they could have had Will training her, and she ends up going to the dark side and betraying him, make it a little more personal. Or, you know, maybe I'm putting too much thought into witchcraft. I'm not entirely sure that they filmed three movies when they made this. It kind of seems like they made two and sort of paper mache this one together with whatever was left over. Because this is the least movie movie of the entire Witchcraft run. And that includes five, and that one was at least 50% boobies. No lie, if you cut out the flashbacks and the opening and ending credits, this movie's only an hour. Feel the magic. You're welcome, future me in editing. The lazier these movies get, the more free time you have. So this film is the sleepiest of the sleepies. It's sleepy time, and she's more tired than ever. Watching Witchcraft 14, you might have thought she was simply a lackey character who dies pretty quick, but no, she's actually the most important character in these films for some mystifying reason. I kind of admire the audacity they have to give her such swaths of screen time. Don't make me beg. Sad witch. Apparently now she's got mind control powers or something? I... This would have been useful in the previous movie, but whatever. This one tries to fill in the gaps of the last ending and sort of piece things together, but it's not terribly cohesive. Here's what happened as far as I can tell. Sleepy grabs Rose and sneers, Angel of Death sends her away. She runs off, summons Tara there, takes her inside, but then is waiting for her like they didn't come in together, changes her shirt just to take it off so they can have a half-assed lesbian rubdown, sex magic is the most powerful magic, and then changes her shirt again and puts on a different stupid hat so they can meet up with the others and pretend she doesn't know what happened, and Rose forgot she was there. Harder. Harder. You guys are barely touching. Supposedly this sex magic helped Rose defeat the Angel of Death. Or maybe it was a failed attempt to help him. It's kind of hard to tell what's a lie and what's just an inconsistency. I don't know what's supposed to be purposeful bad acting. This movie is a perplexing combination of a one-dimensional character who lies a lot and bad continuity. One month later, Sleepy is back in her smelly old outfit and running the evil yoga studio. She's convinced Rose and Tara that she's good and running the studio the way it should be run. Yeah, in hindsight, we probably should have shut down the witchcraft yoga studio when we had the chance. Who would run the witchcraft yoga studio? Well, we have to stop the yoga witchcraft murder spree. Well, good luck with that. Bye. Wait, why did she let the pervy guy back in? She's not even good at running a regular yoga class but that'll teach them to think twice about coming back here. A lot of this movie bravely hinges on us believing that Sleepy is a manipulative mastermind. But then again, she is fooling Rose and Squirrely, who seem to be competing for the most vacant expressions. Name it. Magic. M-A-G-I-C. You can't go schmoo! But Sleepy is a good liar. How are we supposed to rebuild the coven without an effective internet presence? Radia be praised. You're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. Time to cast a spell in ye old fondue pot. Rose is having some misgivings about all of this, but Tara sets her on the right path. She wasn't the one that tried to sacrifice you. She didn't kill your mom. That was all Samuel, the warlock dick. It'll be fine, promise. I did think it was kind of weird that Sharon was holding me hostage and calling me a bitch, but if you say so... If she feels this way, then why is she still going to the yoga studio her mom was murdered in? Is the yoga that good? 
It's all according to Sleepy's plan. <laughs> During their lesson, Sleepy possesses Rose and uses her powers for her own dark bidding. This includes killing some guy and a hooker who has to continually check if she does in fact have breasts. I love having sex through my underwear. Oh no, I'm dead. I am a classically trained actress. I belong on Broadway. And uh, now I'm dead. My Broadway career. That is some Freaky Friday shit right there. Looks like you hit the gutter load. You'll be surprised to hear that Tara is extraordinarily unhelpful. It's completely bewildering to me that these movies were all filmed at the same time with the same director, cast, and locations and still barely make sense with each other. And when you add in them trying to follow continuity from the other films, things start to fall apart super quick. I'm just so confused all the time by what's happening. Rose has some flashbacks to clips from Witchcraft 13, and Sleepy does some voiceover about Rose being a child of three monsters and born in darkness, and I don't know what any of that has to do with being one of the seven-something. She is one of the seven. But then this happens. I think I saw myself being conceived. Are they implying that Will is her father? Because that doesn't make any sense now. The flashbacks are of old Will having sex, but they cast a new guy who's de-aged him again. And the clips they're showing aren't even with his reincarnated sister who was supposedly pregnant with their evil prophecy baby anyway. Unless she's just the kid of him and this rando chick. And both the reincarnated sister and the rando chick died, so who the hell gave birth to her? It's just that, well, me and your housemate have you know, some relations. Does this mean that Rose is the child that will rule the world under evil? I mean, I guess it's nice that they remembered that little plot detail from Witchcraft 13, but it doesn't ever come into play here. I completely missed this detail the first time I watched this. Just why? And if they remembered that, why did they forget that Will was evil at the end? What about your child? It dies with you. Wait, so if she was conceived in 2023, let's be generous and say she's, I don't know, 23, then that means we've moved even further into the future and it's 2046. Jesus. Hardly. Shit! Will may or may not be immortal, but Lutz and Garner are looking pretty good for cops in their 60s. People are being killed in the exact same way they were a month ago, and they somehow don't connect those cases. The best are back at it again. You're lucky my gun wasn't unholstered. And why is that? Because you'd be dead by now. I tried that once, it just isn't my style. <laughs> you were a ghost once. <laughs> hey, remember when you were evil? They keep acting like Will magically enters the room, but seeing as how we never see the door of their shitty cardboard office, uh... The gag doesn't really work. Do you think somebody's trying to send a signal? Absolutely. I mean, come on. Does that look like a face you can't trust? Detective Spanner, go! Are you interested in our special? Ten classes for the price of eight. My back would never forgive me. <laughs> I love this guy so much. Sleepy and her hickeys got nothing on his tough talk. Already I'll be praised. Uh-huh. That random guy with the hooker was like a brother to me. And when I say brother, I don't mean like an actual brother. But I mean it like the way black people use it. Which is more meaningful, I think. Cool. Can I get you something to drink? No, I'm okay right now. But I would like to take a quick peek into your brain. What? Fifteen might be the laziest of the trilogy, but it does utilize Chris Angel Will more, so thumbs up. Witchcraft 15 also introduces us to a new perky character, Danielle. Can I tell you how much I love living in our little witchy sorority together? Fun! Sharon has apparently forced Rose to live with her too, I don't know. She demands Rose get out of the house while she's having sex with her boyfriend, and Rose tells her to fuck off. I wouldn't even mention her if she weren't sadly important to the plot. <laughs> I mean, nobody deserves to see random witchcraft sequel sex scenes. 
Anyway, Sleepy's evil plan. It's okay, they just want to ask me some questions. We all understand about spells and mind control and magic whatevers. The cops are like, yeah, right. Lutz and Garner were there when she vanquished the Angel of Death. At first I thought Tara was in on everything because she never seems concerned when Rose tells her that Sleepy mind controlled her into killing two people. But after a while, I figured out she was just an idiot. And I'm not sure I buy the segments where Rose is possessed by Sleepy. She acts too lively and awake. Nice breasts, by the way. Anywho, it turns out that the guy they killed was a child of Samuel's, and they're gonna use his body to resurrect him. Then why did Sleepy maybe help vanquish him in the first place? I do appreciate that they resurrect him into a corpsey model who spends the entire finale in his briefs. They're witches and warlocks that act as a doorway between our plane or any other demonic planes. But he's dead, doesn't I mean closed for business? No, they have to be dead. This body is broken. Weird how this is supposedly how it works, but I'm surprised that my new body is dead. How the hell did I function for so many millennia? I'm so dumb. Speaking of which, at least Rose has got Tara on her side. Where's Tara? I'm taking very good care of her. Rose, are you here? Sorry I didn't text you back. My phone died and I had to charge it. Literally, that's how it happens. Both Sleepy and Tara did nothing. By taking care of her, I'm assuming Sleepy meant she left a trail of peanuts that kept her distracted for a while. When Sleepy explains Samuel's kid, she says he slept with a lot of people, and they show more clips of William having sex, so I don't even know what they're trying to imply anymore. Are these supposed to be different Samuels, or is the movie just reminding us that Will likes sex too? Feed on your progeny. You've inherited some of my best traits. So Samuel is Rose's dad now? What? Do all of his many children have powers he could use to resurrect his true form? Or is Rose just special for some reason? I'm so confused. And Samuel kills Sleepy. No. Rose is in trouble. It'll take a mighty powerful force to help her now. And that's Other Dad. You'll be in me. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Can you even imagine having this guy between you and the end of the world? Fuck. And then we just repeat the climax from the previous movie. Literally, it's just the same thing. I don't know guys, I just sort of feel sorry for the movies at this point. I feel kind of bad laughing at them now. Feels like I should be better than this. But I'm not. <laughs> but wait, the dumb foundry isn't over yet. Lutz, Garner, and Will leave Rose at the crime scene with at least one dead body because, hey, their section of the story is over. Tara is possessed by Sleepy's ghost, possibly, and Rose casts her out, possibly, which I think blows her back to the house for some reason. Danielle decides to have sex with her boyfriend at a hotel, and, uh, Sleepy's possessing her now and kills the guy, I guess. Will Sleepy's reign of terror never end? When will she finally get to take her nap? This is less a movie and more an oh by the way. There's nothing added here that wasn't already in the previous movie. Even story-wise, it's pretty similar. It all comes off like a deleted ending from the first film. I couldn't follow the story for Beans, though. I'm still not sure who's related to who or what exactly that ending was. And for a movie that's only an hour, that's a lot of meaningless garbage to pack in. But don't worry, Witchcraft is always trying to top itself. And Witchcraft 16? That's a whole lot of nonsense.
is wrong with you? What do you mean? I mean, you're all, ah, in here. 